Hey guys, Phil from Trail Talk here and welcome to the first buyer's guide for 2021. And in this buyer's guide, we're gonna be covering the best value budget hardtails for 2021. So I know a lot of you are gonna be in a rush when you're looking for these kind of buyer's guides, so I'm gonna waste none of your time. So all the timestamps for all the bikes is in the description, and then the time for the first bike is here as well. So you can jump ahead to when I talk about the bikes. But if you could subscribe and smash that like button as well, that'd be greatly appreciated. And if you wanna bear with me for a minute, I'm gonna quickly go over what I look for when I'm looking at a budget hardtail mountain bike. So when it comes to a budget bike, we have to be realistic with our expectations. It's not gonna be able to do everything that we see on Rampage and stuff like that but what we want to get is the best experience that we can for the money. So when it comes to the frame and spec of the bike, we can't expect top of the line forks with high levels of adjustment, one by 12 drive trains, through axles in the front and rear. We just can't expect all this stuff. But what we want to see is the start of this trickle down effect from these more expensive bikes. So we're going to start to see longer reaches as well as slacker head angles when it comes to the geometry. And this is going to give you a load of confidence on the descents. We also want to see a modern cockpit, so that shorter stem and wider bars, and that's going to give you a lot more stability when you're going down the descents as well. And then lastly, we also want to see hydraulic disc brakes, and this is going to give you great braking performance in all weather conditions. In the past year, it's been great to see a few brands really step away from the XC-oriented geometry that we're used to seeing on these budget-oriented hardtails. And they've also been putting some real thought into what modern-day mountain bikers want in terms of specs. So some bikes even come with entry-level air forks, and then we're seeing some one by drivetrains on these bikes as well, which is awesome to see. While it's not gonna be worthwhile to spend a fortune upgrading these bikes, some of them provide a great platform to build on. And if you just stick to XE and more flowy terrain, more XE stuff and lighter trail, these are probably gonna be the only bikes that you need. You're probably gonna see no need to upgrade in the future. Okay, so before we jump into the bikes, let's quickly talk about what I mean when I say budget. So for me personally, it's probably best off avoiding the very, very entry level bike in most mountain bike brands ranges. They'll typically come with forks that you can't really take on the trail and they might come with cable actuated disc brakes. So it's definitely worth spending a little bit more. So in terms of dollar value, that's gonna be around about 550 British pounds. It's gonna be 750 US dollars and then around 900 Australian dollars. So we're gonna be covering five different bikes and then also five different worthy entries as well. And these are gonna be from all around the world. So everyone should be able to have a bike in their country. And the links to all these bikes will be in the description. So if you're interested in one, definitely check that out if you wanna get it. And without further ado, let's get into the first bike. So the first bike on the list is the Vetus Nucleus VR, and this probably has to be the best value hardtail on the market, coming in at 549 British pounds, which is equivalent to a 900 Australian dollars and 650 US dollars. And it's sold direct to consumer through chain reaction cycles in the UK. Coming in both 29 and 27.5 inch wheels, this bike has everything you could want from a bike that costs even up to double the price. First off, you get an SR Suntour XCR32 air fork in 100mm of travel in the 29 models and 120mm in the 27.5 inch models. An air fork is great as you can dial in the spring rate to the rider's weight, which you can't really do on budget coil forks on the other bikes in this list. There is also a tapered steerer 2, which is again a feature on more expensive bikes, which means the junction between the frame and the fork's a little bit stiffer, but you can also upgrade the fork to more premium options in the future. There is also a 1x8 drivetrain courtesy of Box 4, which not only makes the drivetrain nice and simple to use, but the clutch also helps with chain retention and reduces chain slap on rough terrain. And while the 11 to 40 tooth range isn't the widest, it should be more than enough to get you up most mountains with ease. The smart spec continues with the wheels. You get 30 millimeter wide internal width tubeless ready rims. Again, unheard of at this price point. And while the tires aren't tubeless ready, they're great tread patterns. You got the WTB Vigilante up front and the Trail Boss in the rear. And that front tire comes in the grippy high grip compound. You also get hydraulic Tektro disc brakes. The finishing kit's solid too, coming courtesy of Nukeproof. So you get the Nukeproof Neutron kit. So you get 760 millimeter wide bars and a short 50 millimeter stem, which puts you in a prime position to command the trails. Along with that, you get the Nukeproof saddle and then also some Vetus lock-on grips. They really nailed the spec here, trying to maximize performance and value and really put thought into what the modern bound and biker really needs. And that continues onto the geometry of the bike. 
On the 29 inch model, you get a 67 degree head angle, which is really great for this kind of entry level trail hardtail, a 450 millimeter reach on the size large, and a 73 seat angle as well. Which remember, on a hardtail, the reach grows a little bit when the fork sags into its travel and the seat angle gets a little bit steeper too. As you can tell, the bike's absolutely dialed and there's even internal dropper post routing built into the frame. So that would be the first upgrade I'd do. I'd put a dropper post on it. So yeah, this bike is dialed and that's why it's my best value budget hardtail for 2021. Next up, we have the Marin Bobcat Trail 3 coming in at 545 pounds, 599 US dollars and 899 Australian dollars. Marin hardtails have become super popular with the growth of Matt Jones and the San Quentin which he co-developed and more recently they dropped the El Roy which is an absolutely killer chrome molly super aggressive hardtail and that's been getting some rave reviews as well. So it's good to start to see some trickle down of these awesome bikes onto their entry level hardtails. What's most impressive about the Bobcat Trail is the modern geometry that you're getting. So it comes with a 67 degree head angle. 465 millimeter reach on the size large, which is really impressive, and a 74.5 degree seat angle. You also get a super low standover, and what it might lack in spec compared to the Vetus, the geometry will have you feeling a bit more comfortable at speed. In terms of spec, you still get hydraulic disc brakes and a great cockpit with a 45 millimeter stem and 780 millimeter wide bars. Up front, you get a more trail ready 120 millimeters of fork travel courtesy of the SR Sontor XCM and that's a coil fork as well. In terms of the drivetrain, you get a 2x8 Shimano Altus, so it's good to see a 2x instead of a 3x, but a clutched rear derailleur would be nice, but it's definitely far from a deal breaker. The frame also has wheel specific sizes, so on smaller frames up to medium, you can get 27.5 inch wheels and then sizes medium to extra large come in 29 inch wheels. The frame is also internally dropper post ready, but it does come with a straight steerer, which may be an issue if you plan to upgrade the fork in the future, but this isn't a deal breaker for me, especially on these more budget oriented bikes. Overall, the ride position and the geometry of this bike should give you lots of confidence and help you progress on the trail. If you live in Australia and want to get the bike, I do have an affiliate link for Bicycles Online who sell them in Australia. So if this buyer's guide did help you in picking out the bike, it would be awesome if you could buy through that link in the description below. So now onto the Caliber 2 Cubed, coming in at 500 British pounds. Unfortunately, this one is for the UK only. I would have liked to have the slightly more expensive Line 20, but that one's just out of budget at 650 pounds. So Caliber is very well known for their great value dual suspension bikes in the Boss Nut and the Sentry, and the 2 Cubed is no different. Like the Marin and Vetus, the geometry is more progressive than most entry level hardtails, with a 67 degree head angle, 74 degree seat angle, and super roomy 473 millimeter reach on the size large. Which does make the wheelbase slightly longer than the Marin, but the seat tube and standover is a little higher than the Marin. The spec is very good for the money too. Even though it does come with a coil fork, the 100mm travel RockShox XC30 offers a fair bit more support and control compared to the SR Suntour coil forks on a lot of the other bikes that we're going to be talking about. And it does have more meaningful preload adjustments, so you can dial in your weight a little bit. Like the other bikes, you also get Tektro hydraulic disc brakes, which do the job well, and a mixture of Shimano, Altus, and Acera, which form a 2x9 drivetrain setup. The bike also rolls on 27.5 inch wheels, and the rubber is taken care of with a WTB Trail Boss. To round it all off, you get a short stem and wide bars too. The spec isn't quite as good as the Vetus for the money, but it's a great all round bike for someone entering the sport. Next up, we have the Rocky Mountain Fusion coming in at 749 US dollars. I couldn't quite find the UK pricing and if this bike will be available in Australia yet, but to me, this has got to be the best looking and probably the best frame out of the bunch. It has the longest reach out of all the bikes coming in at 475 millimeters for the size large and the slackest head angle too at 66.5 degrees. The standover and seat tube is super low too, which should make maneuvering around the bike a little bit easier too. This is a true trail hardtail. The frame also comes with a tapered head tube, 
So with this geometry, it's probably worth upgrading the fork to something more capable than the 100mm travel Suntour XCM coil fork that comes stock with the bike. The drivetrain is the real standout when it comes to the spec of the bike. It's a 1x9 micro shift advent drivetrain and that comes with a clutch and an 11 to 42 tooth cassette. This is the perfect drivetrain at this price point. You also get 25mm internal width tubeless ready rims but with non-tubeless WTB Ranger tires. Other than that, you get Shimano MT200 hydraulic disc brakes and a great cockpit too with a short 50mm stem and 760mm wide bars. If you prefer 27.5 inch wheels, there's also the Soul, which is pretty much the 27.5 equivalent of the Fusion, but I prefer the 29 inch wheels that come with the Fusion. From a bigger brand, it's great to see so much thought going into not only the spec, but the geometry of the frame. So this one's a big thumbs up for me. So the last bike on the list is a brand new for 2021 Polygon Extrata 5 coming in at 799 US dollars and just out of budget at 999 Australian dollars. Polygon has been known for their great value for money and have been killing it with their brand new Siskiyou T and then also the Siskiyou D. So it's good to see some updated trail ready geometry on the new Xstrata. It's got a super low standover and seat tube and it's internal dropper post ready. It's got a 67 degree head angle, steep 75 degree seat angle and then a 450 millimeter reach on the size large. It also has a tapered head tube too, which is good to see if you want to upgrade to a better fork in the future. It also has Polygon's wheel fit size system. So a small and medium frame come in 27.5 inch wheels and then medium to extra large come in 29. Onto the spec now, you get a clutch equipped 2x10 Shimano Dior drivetrain with an 11 to 42 tooth cassette. This setup is also super easy to change into a 1x10 by simply changing the front chain ring. You also get Shimano hydraulic disc brakes and a 120mm travel Suntour XEM coil sprung fork. To round it all off, you get a trail ready cockpit with a 45mm stem and 760mm wide bars. Overall, it's a pretty good package with good geometry too. Like the Marin, if you do live in Australia and do want to get the bike, the affiliate link for Bicycles Online where you can get it is in the description. So there you go, there's my top five bikes. And quickly, before you go, let's go into my five worthy mentions that just missed out on the list for one reason or another. First up, we have the Voodoo Bazango, which is just too much out of budget. I covered this bike in a bit more detail in my best value bike brands video. So if you go to that video, I'll put the link in the description and skip to 11 minutes and 45 seconds in that video. You'll be able to see all the info there. But it's a great value option and the spec is pretty great for the money too. Next up, you have the Norco Storm 2, which again, just out of budget. The spec is really good with a one by Shimano Dior drivetrain, and the geometry is also pretty good for a budget frame too, with a 68.5 degree head angle, 455 millimeter reach, and 75 degree seat angle. And I dig the color too, it looks pretty damn good. Then there's the Boardman MHT 8.6, and this one's available through Halfords in the UK. Again, just out of the price range, you get similar level spec as the Voodoo for the money with a one by drivetrain and air fork too. Then there's a curveball from Walmart. The Schwinn Axum isn't a bad little bike for the money. There's also the dropper post edition, which is even better value for money. And it comes a fair bit under the budget. So if you want to build on this bike, tinker a little bit, it's even got a tapered head tube and you can kind of modify it a bit there. So yeah, it's definitely a great option. And there's some great reviews out there on YouTube too. Lastly, if you're going to pick from the big three in terms of giant specialized in Trek, I think the new Specialized Rock Hopper Sport is probably the best, but I definitely lean more towards these other bikes on the list. They're a lot better value for money. So there you go. We've finally come to the end of the first buyer's guide for 2021. After a fair bit of research, these were the best five bikes that I could find for someone entering the sport or someone just looking for a great value XC, more light trail duty bike. If you're more interested in a bike that was a little bit more expensive and something you can progress and upgrade on a little bit more, I'll have my more trail oriented hardtail buyer's guide coming out soon, as well as my entry level dual suspension bike coming out as well. So they'll be in the description and then I'll also put them in the pinned comment of this video as well. So definitely stick around or subscribe if you wanna check those videos out in the future. So these videos do take a little bit of time to put together. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys dropped a like, also subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this in the future, plenty of buyer's guides coming soon. And then also leave a comment too. Did I miss out on a bike? Let me know in the comments or let me know what bike you like the most. But as always guys, thanks for watching. See ya.